Hi, this is Richard Weilman, and I want to welcome all of you to our next webinar with Dr. Reckner, How to Get Knee to Knee with More Doctor Prospects. Last month in part one, we covered how to bring the value gap and how to close that when working with doctors. We talked very specifically at doctors or white coats are wired very differently, how to engage them, how to align your words and actions. And with doctors, particularly white coats, it's not about the money, it's about the service. And we talked about some of the biggest sources of pain they have. By the way, that was recorded and it is in the library on the Weilman Center. So for those of you that perhaps didn't attend or you want to go back and refresh yourself, just log into your Weilman Center, go to the library. It's there in its entirety for you. Today, we're going to cover how to get kneecap to kneecap with doctors. And I would be remiss if I did not articulate a little bit about Dr. Rackner's medical background and her current work. She's had over a 30-year career as a practicing surgeon, clinical faculty at the University of Washington School of Medicine, and she's worked with a lot of entrepreneurs and advisors like you to successfully, if you will, acquire physician clients. And she really takes you step-by-step step how to overcome the high barriers that really engage clients at a deep level in the physician's market. As many of you know, she has many books that she's written. Her latest one's The Myth of the Rich Doctor, The New Thriving Medical Practice, and Nine Money Mistakes That Doctors Make. A lot of advisors use those as marketing tools to engage prospects. And speaking about that, uh, you should know, and I didn't talk about this on the previous one, but I did want you to know that she does several, three times a year, if I recall correctly, in-person boot camps and delivers the same content that she does on her online coursework, except your face-to-face, -face, kneecap to kneecap with her. And she does those three times a year. You can reach out to her. We'll give you her email address at the end. Very comprehensive boot camp to work with physicians. She also licenses content for doctors, including her books or videos, et cetera, to help you co-brand yourself. And of course, she speaks at a lot of educational events that advisors do, several whom I know, and the advisor hosted for doctors, and then Dr. Brackner comes in and speaks. So she also has a new program called Power Prospecting, and she really helps people get engaged to give you, the advisor, the competitive edge. So you can contact her direct if you have interest in working with her. That's not what this is about today. But I did want to mention that we had so many emails after the last one. You know, what type of work can Dr. Rackner do with me? So I wanted to mention the boot camps, the content. Uh, the educational, the speaking, you think she does. So you can contact her direct. We'll give you that email at the end. I don't want to spend one more second. Right now, I want to welcome Dr. Rackner. Dr. Rackner, thank you again for the wonderful content last time. The microphone is yours. Well, thanks so much, Richard. Let's just dig in and talk about the number one question that I get, which is how do I get in front of more doctor prospects? The goal today is to give you the unfair advantage. Today, I'm going to briefly show you four studies of high-performing advisors. I'm going to show you this step-by-step -step blueprint to reach doctors. We're going to cover three high ROI marketing campaign, three buckets of leads that you can dip into, three mistakes to avoid, elements of a sales funnel that will shorten your sales cycle, and ideas about how to leverage your efforts to accelerate your growth. So let's talk about your business. You know is that you penetrate a new market, you progress through three stages of business building, the startup phase, the building phase, and the maximum velocity stage where you're set apart from all of the others and you're really the go-to person. Well, just as there are differences between suits and white coats, so too there are differences in build, business building. So if you look at this curve, the work to enter the market of white coats, which is in red, is higher than the work needed to enter a market of suits, which is in dotted blue. Well, gee, why would anybody be interested in doing this? It's because of what happens in the maximum velocity stage. In the medical market, there is a huge potential for great returns. Doctors are very loyal clients, but more importantly, they will tell other doctors about you. So a lot of advisors get to what I call the escape velocity. As you know, when you launch a rocket ship, once it removes itself from the Earth's gravitational field, it'll just keep going off. 
And once you really get established with doctors, those doctors will tell other doctors about you. Uh, Vicki, we've lost your audio. Dr. Rackner, we've lost your audio. In the course as we go along. So let's talk about the B to D blueprint. You've heard of B to B business, you've heard of B to C business. Doing business with doctors is really its own thing. And we're gonna be talking about strategies and tactics to help you get there. And it's intended to help you in all three stages of business building. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna work on lowering the barrier to entry into the medical market. And that means that the high barrier to entry is actually good news for you because what that's gonna do is keep out your competition. So one of the secrets of working with doctors is to get a doctor to become an advocate for your work. And then they will open the red velvet rope for you. Now, many of you on the call already have one or two doctor clients. And your objective is not just to have satisfied doctor clients, but when you delight them, they will become your advocates and open the door for you and tell other doctors. And if you don't have any doctor clients yet, a little later in the presentation, we're going to talk about how you can find your own doctor advocate who will open the rope for you. Next, what we're going to do is talk about how to quickly build trust because your practice grows at the rate at which you build trust. And trust to do what? Well, doctors need to know, first, that you care about them as people. Second, that you understand their unique financial needs. And third, that you have experience helping doctors who are just like them. So as Richard said, when you communicate with doctors, you wanna be sure to talk about what you have accomplished for other doctors, because that is the value promise that they are looking for. You communicate this by planting your flag in the medical market with your value promise that speaks to what you have accomplished for doctors. And then last, we're gonna talk about how to get to this high ROI phase. And you do that by creating a culture of introduction. So let me be clear, you're not asking for referrals. That is the best way to erode your brand equity. You're asking for introductions, for the opportunity to deliver more of your pearls of wisdom to more doctors. So a lot of advisors approach their practice building like a hunter and gatherer. Well, I'm gonna bag a new client, then I'm gonna go out and bag the next one. But in the medical market, you can make a shift to an agrarian mindset where you're not cultivating crops, but you're cultivating introductions so that you can get your value in front of more doctors. And uh, again, just to correlate what you're learning here to accelerate your growth, this is really expounded on in video number 10. So, to begin the conversation about the B2D blueprint, here are just four quick cases of advisors who each built very, very different practices. Um, the first was a son and a grandson of a surgeon. He probably would have become a surgeon if he were not phobic about blood, but now he is working with surgeons. And he got to this escape velocity primarily through social networking. He would take people that he's known his whole life out to dinner, and they started trusting him with their money. And then these doctors started telling other doctors, well, he's so busy now that he really can't take on any new clients. So he hired a junior associate who's now working with residents. Those are about this guy's age peers. And we're talking about some value offerings that he can use with the residents to generate revenue, even though they have incomes in the 50 to 60,000 um, range. I've got another advisor who's working with Catholic doctors. He's a 
very strong member of the Catholic Church. He's in a men's group with other Catholic doctors. And he just went to a convention where there were 700 Catholic doctors there. This is a great market for him. I've got another client who is Chinese, and he's reaching out to Chinese doctors who work in California. Again, another great, great way of building a practice. But the big question you want to know about is what's your path? to success. So let's talk about these steps of the B2D blueprint. And it's important to remember that acquiring clients is much like fishing. If you wanted a successful fishing expedition, you would first decide what kind of fish you want to catch. To be successful in the medical market, you cannot try to be all things to all doctors. You have to choose the kind of doctor you're going to focus on. Okay, next, if you're fishing, you'd find out a little bit about the life cycle. You need to know where and when to be at that place in order to optimize your chance of catching fish. So too, you want to gather intelligence about the doctors with whom you'd like to work so that you can be at the right place and the right time with the right marketing message. So your bait and tackle are sort of like your marketing campaigns and your sales funnels. And last, you want to obey the rules by demonstrating cultural competency so you fit in with doctors. So for example, if your website says that you work with doctors and dentists, that means that you don't really understand this culture because dentists are doctors. All physicians are doctors, but not all doctors are physicians. The way you tell what kind of doctor are the initial after a doctor's name. So you've got to be really meticulous about all of these little details, just like you want your doctor to be meticulous when he or she is treating you. All right, so the first step of the BDD blueprint is to focus, choose your best fit clients. And the three criteria that you can use to define a great focus is first of all, you want to identify a like-minded group of doctors who share a similar source of pain. You want them to gather regularly because you want to be able to take advantage of doctors' propensity to share resources with each other. You want to be the go-to guy or gal within a targeted group of doctors. And third, different doctors have different temperaments. You want to choose a group with whom you resonate and resonate well. So let's begin with the first step. How do you slice the doctor pie so that you wind up with like-minded doctors with a similar source of pain? So here are some basic ways to slice the pie. You can target by medical specialty. And this is actually the easiest to do because doctors naturally congregate on the basis of medical specialty. Now, the world of medicine, is as structured as the military and everyone knows their rank. So the higher the rank, the higher the income and power and social standing. So just to give you a sense of the variations between compensation, here is a recent report from Medscape. You can go to Medscape and sign up for a free account and have access to these wonderful surveys that they do. So you can see at the top, there are the ologists, cardiologists, gastroenterologists, radiologists, dermatologists. And at the bottom of the list, you find people in primary care. So if you were playing the odds, you could have a pretty good idea of how much an individual doctor is making. But this isn't the whole picture because some doctors are a little more entrepreneurial. For example, this year I ran into somebody who was in internal medicine. You see here on the slide that it says on average they make about 230,000 a year, but this guy was making over seven figures because he ran four practices. So obviously this isn't the complete picture. The next way that you can slice the doctor pie is on the basis of the ownership stake in the practice. And now this makes the most sense to you because a doctor running his or her own practice has different financial concerns than an employee who has a 401k and sort of feels like Schwab is their retirement um, planner. Um, again, here's some data 
about physician compensation by practice setting. So you're most likely to find a high earning physician in an office-based single specialty group practice. So it's the group of 10 cardiologists or 20 orthopedic surgeons. And again, there is tremendous variation in some communities. An employed doctor might be making more than, um, oh, say a doctor who's in one of these group practices. The third way that you can target is by career stage. So I just told you about an advisor who's really focusing on residents now. I have other advisors who are focusing on doctors in their 50s who might want to speed up retirement by five or 10 years. And this is a really hot topic. This tends to be a little more challenging, though, because it's hard to find a mailing list of doctors who were 50. It's much easier with these other techniques. Next, you can target by gender or by skin color. Um, as you take a look at compensation in the medical market, what falls out very quickly is that white men earn the most. Here is a comparison between men and women who were doing basically the same full-time job. You see this gender inadequacy. Um, there was recently an article in the British Medical Journal that talked about how race factors in. So any way that somebody is different than a white male probably means that there is a gap in pay. That means that these people really need to close that income gap and really take wealth building very, very seriously. So we're not just talking about whites or blacks. This could be East Indian or Hispanic or Chinese. Focusing on the basis of religion tends to be a very effective way of choosing doctors. And there are medical associations for Catholic doctors or Christian doctors or Muslim doctors or Hindu doctors or Jewish doctors. And these tend to be very tight groups. So if you wanna help somebody make their philanthropy go further. That's a great way of getting yourself in front of one of these groups. And I just wanna mention that while we are in fact talking about doctors, I just wanna mention that there are some hidden jewels in the medical market. So nurse anesthetists on average can generate a higher income than a primary care doctor. And they're very nice people. And once again, they share resources. Physician's assistant are great. I love working with pharmacists. They're wonderful people. And again, while their income might not be the income of a, of a cardiothoracic surgeon, um, they're good savers. And so a pharmacist might actually have more assets than a cardiothoracic surgeon. Okay, so you want to figure out how to slice the doctor pie. Second criteria, you want them to gather regularly. And just the rule of thumb, especially as you're getting started in the medical market, is if you can find a medical association, you're on the right track. Conversely, if you can't find an association, it's going to be a little more challenging. So a mature practice probably has you serving doctors with maybe four different focuses. So I'd recommend that with the first groups that you enter, find something with the medical association. So for example, one of the advisors with whom I work loves smoking cigars. So one of his focuses, if you will, are cigar smoking doctors. And while he can do that, it's just a little more challenging to get involved with something like that. All right, and then last is your affinity. So you, can expect to have a doctor client for life. This is a long-term relationship. And just like there's lots of nice people out there, you don't wanna marry all of them. So too, there are a lot of great doctors out there, but you might find yourself getting along with some doctors better than another. And I would really recommend that as you go out there and meet doctors, you ask yourself, do I like this person? Is this the kind of person that I really want to spend time with? Sometimes just your life history will lead you in the direction 
of a good fit. So for example, I'm working with a woman who was a math professor last year until she had a heart attack. Now th she's doing great, but this was a life in a career altering activity for her because now what she's helping doctors do is collect all of the revenue that they're deserving of. And when we're talking about how she builds her practice, of course, it's completely natural for her to start out reaching out to cardiologists and telling the story about how cardiologists made a difference in her life. And now she'd like to reciprocate and help cardiologists thrive also. So you know that in the Accelerate Your Growth course, finding your focus is a huge, important step. And if you go and watch step two, video two, you'll get more information about how to strategically find your focus. In addition, you'll find this segmentation worksheet. And Richard, would you just like to say a little bit about this worksheet? Absolutely, thank you, Vicki. This is a critical exercise. Now, Vicki, if you'll back up one slide, I'll just speak to that and then we'll show them this example if, if you're able to do that. This is right in the workbook, video number two of Accelerate Your Growth. And this is the matrix you'll see in the workbook. And the important thing is to list the names of the clients or prospects you want to duplicate. And obviously uh, on this webinar, we're talking about physicians, so list them. Then you see the second column, occupation, business, and profession. You'll know that he's an anesthesiologist, she's a pediatrician, whatever. What business or occupation uh, organizations, recreational clubs, et cetera. What we've discovered is a lot of advisors just want to write down what they know about these people instead of writing down, as I had one recently with a fellow wrote down, likes animals. Well, the, in the coursework here is the actual three sentence script to call your clients so you can fill this in correctly. So if, if Vicki, uh, Dr. Rector, if you'll bring me to the next slide now, we'll just give them. Here's an example filled in correctly. And here you see Hilda, number two. This was the one likes animals. Turns out she's on the board of this SPCA. That's a lot different than likes animals. And when you fill this in correctly, and if you have physician clients and you fill this in indoor prospects, you're going to identify the organizations, whether it's the anesthesiology association, whether it's a pediatrician, whatever, because they absolutely network and communicate. The bottom line is by calling them on the phone, using the script right in the workbook and calling them on the phone, and filling in this matrix, you're going to uncover exactly what mark, what organizations they're in and which ones you want to target. Of course, you'll also find out things about recreational clubs and religious, cultural, ethnic. But this is a critical exercise. And too many people think, well, we'll just gloss over this and go to the next video. This is critical. If you've gone through it and haven't called your clients and filled this out, I'd encourage you to do that. If you have filled this out, then you know what I'm speaking about. You've uncovered great markets, not just in the medical community, but others as well. Thank you, Dr. Rackner. Back to you. Thanks, Richard. So this step of choosing your focus is a critical first step. I will tell you that all successful advisors in the medical market have complete clarity about whom they help. So I know that you will too. All right, so step number two in the BDD blueprint is to gather the intelligence so that you're at the right place and the right time with the right marketing message. Now, I'm an avid birder, and I know that if I wanna see eagles, I visit the Skagit Valley River in January and February. Well, why? It's because the eagles flock there to feast on the dying salmon at the river's edge. You would like to do everything that you can to make your job of engaging doctors as easy as possible. So this intelligence will help you do that. Now, I learned this the hard way. Let me tell you about my $40,000 mistake. So as a doctor, I got really frustrated with the fact that patients knew so little about their medical history. Well, what medications do you take? Oh, the little pink pill. Well, I was flying back from delivering a talk and somebody's heart stopped beating. Um, so I went to his aid 
and he was traveling alone. There was nothing in his wallet about any of his medical conditions. And I thought, this is this is dangerous when patients know so little about their health history. So I, as a doctor, thought, well, what if I create this personal health journal where people can write their own stories in their own words? And I checked with some people, oh, great idea. So I invested about $40,000 writing and editing it and for color printing. And then I went on a radio show a day around this time of year and all of the radio hosts said, wow, what a great thing. Everyone should buy this for Christmas presents. And I sold precisely zero. So what was the problem? I, as an expert, knew what people needed, but it wasn't what they wanted. Their sense was that taking care of your medical records was the doctor's job. So knowing not just what people need, but what they want is important. So to drive home this point, and let's see if I can really make this work. Um, what I'd like you to do, I'm gonna start this video. There's gonna be some movement in the screen. I want you to focus on what will be a blinking green light at the center of the screen. So here we go. So just focus on that blinking green light, focus, focus, focus and notice what happens to the yellow dots. If you're like most people, they come and they go. This is a phenomenon called motion-induced blindness. Now, pilots know that they've got to constantly scan the horizon to look out for danger. What does this have to do with you? Well, your blinking green light are your services. You know what people need, but unless and until your focus is at the same place that the doctor's focus is, you run the risk of being invisible. So going out and talking to your prospects will allow you to be at the right place in the right time with the right marketing message. Because remember, doctors need you. I mean, there is a huge need here. And I want you to be one of those doctors who helps. So if you really want to think more about this, you can watch video number six in Accelerate Your Growth. All right, in the third step of the B2D blueprint, you want to plant your flag in the medical market. You want to announce to the world that you have this special interest in working with doctors. The major pushback I get is, well, gee, if I articulate this focus of doctors, am I going to scare away other people? And I will tell you that my experience is, if anything, articulating your focus in the medical market will in fact attract other people. I had an advisor who was quoted in a newspaper and they, you know, they wanted to describe him. What do you do? And he asked me, well, do I want to say I work with doctors? I said, absolutely. And he called me up later and he said, I just got a phone call. This business owner had read the article and he said, Hey, if you work with doctors, you must be pretty good. You work with business owners too. So I think that there is value in focus. Remember, if you wanna do business with doctors, conduct yourself as one. The most respected doctor is the sub subspecialist. So it's actually gonna help you grow your practice. All right, so this means tactically thinking about a couple of things. Well, what about your online presence? What about your social media profiles? What about your business cards? And you can approach this in one of two ways. You can be a lumper where you just have one website and maybe there's a tab for business owners, for doctors, or maybe you're a splitter. So if your firm were, you know, Willow Wealth, you could buy another URL willowwealth4docs.com, and you could have an entire separate website. There's no right or wrong answer, but what is important is that when a doctor arrives at a website, they know right from the beginning that you have this special interest in working with more doctors. The other thing that you can do at this stage is stock a gift closet. Always have something to give away to doctors, something that they value. And you can just think about this ahead of time. So it might mean books or articles, or maybe you create some how-to videos that answer doctors frequently asked questions. But you've always got something and you've always got something new. All right, step number four of the B2D blueprint is to launch high 
ROI marketing campaigns. So Richard says relationships drive revenue and you build relationships by delivering value. And remember, value like beauty is in the eyes of the beholder. So as you gather intelligence, you want a sense of the things that doctors are gonna value. All right, now as you think about your marketing, you can think about three kinds of marketing campaigns. The first is relationship marketing, and this might be your primary kind of marketing. This is where maybe you have a social relationship and you transform that into a business relationship. Then there are educational marketing campaigns. This is where you engage doctors by delivering educational content. And doctors are educators. The word doctor comes from the Latin root meaning teacher. So again, when you educate doctors, you're acting like them. And this is probably the most effective marketing campaign in the medical market. Then there's community marketing where you become the architect of a community. So I told you about the advisor who works with doctors who love cigars. There are lots of ways that you can form communities based on a special interest, including golf. There are a lot of doctors who are golfers. And in fact, when I went to the Washington State Chapter of the American College of Surgeons annual meeting, it would always be held at a resort because it would also be a family vacation, but there were a lot of golfers. So if you're a, a golf pro, um, that would be a great connection. Maybe your community is a community of golfers. All right, so how do you get the most bang from your marketing campaigns? I'd like to suggest to you the three go-to marketing campaigns that tend to get the best results. The first is what I call launch a conspiracy of service. So what you do is you go out into the world, kind of like Johnny Appleseed, and just distribute little seeds of wisdom, of financial wisdom. We know that doctors need your help. Doctors are behind in retirement planning. They get a little embarrassed about the fact that they know so little about money that it gets difficult to reach out. So you can launch this conspiracy of service to basically reach out to more doctors. So what I invite you to think about is what if you had a cure for a rare cancer? You, you wouldn't keep this a secret and you would wanna get the word out to as many people as possible because why should people be out there dying when you've got the cure? Well, there are doctors out there in financial pain and you are there to help them. So launching this conspiracy about service is not about you. It's about reaching these doctors who are alone thinking that they're the only doctors who are having this kind of problem. And then with pride, you can launch a mission. I'm on a mission to help doctors take control of their financial destiny. And just put that message out there. Then you can invite people to join you on this miss mission. So who do you bring this message to? Well, the three buckets of leads you bring any marketing message to are first family, friends, and fans people who already know, like, and trust you. This is your low hanging fruit. This is always where you want to start because people you already know, no doctors. A doctor might be the next door neighbor. The doctor might be somebody at the church or at the kid's soccer game. And so you could potentially be one phone call away from getting knee to knee with your next doctor prospect. The second bucket of leads are what you call centers of influence. I call them power partners. So these are people who already have relationships with groups of doctors. And further, it's even nicer if the doctor is gonna open an email that this person sends out. So if you can meet with this person and who might somebody like this be? An executive director of a medical association. Maybe somebody who sells medical malpractice insurance. Maybe it's a small business lender to doctors. These people all know doctors. They probably all want to build their business. And they know that they do that by delivering value that you could potentially offer. The third bucket of leads are the doctor information seekers. So these are the doctors who are online Googling their 
frequent questions. They're the people who are coming to seminars or reading publications. So you can bring this conspiracy of service to all three buckets of leads. And here's an example about a script um, that you could use. Let's say you have a doctor friend. You can say, may I ask for your help? Um, think about a time in your life when you had money concerns. It was a constant distraction. Well, you might not know this, but half of doctors who serve our community are behind in retirement planning. And despite their high earning potential, there are doctors out there in financial pain and doctors who are worried about money engage in distracted doctoring. Their financial pain also contributes to the growing epidemic of burnout among physicians and dentists. And then you can say, so if you know any doctor like this, have them contact me because I am giving away a free book, The Nine Money Mistakes Doctors Make, or The Myth of the Rich Doctor, or maybe you've written a book that you can give away. And I'm sorry, I misspoke here. This is actually not for physicians. This is for um, family, friends, and fans who are not doctors. And, and this is a proven script. So you can just take it out, practice, and this works. You can also coach your own doctor clients if you have any. You can say, if you hear a colleague talking about falling revenue or rising taxes or whatever, please invite them to reach out to us and get our special report or our webinar replay or our checklist. So what you're not asking your clients to do is make a referral for retirement planning. I, um, I coach an advisor who's married to a radiologist. And um, he keeps on saying, you know, why won't my wife just introduce me to all of her colleagues? And the answer is because it just doesn't work like that. She would be taking a risk if she were to refer one of the partners and then something would happen. That puts her professional um, uh, reputation on the line. So nobody, no doctor is going to take that kind of risk. However, doctors will happily pass along great resources. And then it's up to you and this new doctor to build a relationship. All right. Marketing campaign number two is to leverage medical meetings. So it's very, very difficult to get in front of doctors. It's very difficult to get around the gatekeeper. But doctors do gather. And of the 800,000 practicing physicians and 200,000 practicing dentists, over 90% will go to specialty meetings. So what numbers of people go to these meetings? We're talking about tens of thousands. So maybe you want to go to Chicago to the American Academy of Ophthalmology. And maybe you even buy a list of ophthalmologists in your area and say, hey, if you're going to this meeting, please stop by the booth because I'm giving away a free something. Or if you do seminar marketing, maybe what you want to do is get that list of local ophthalmologists and invite them to a special breakfast event. You can just rent a room at the hotel. It's a lot less expensive to do a breakfast event than a dinner event. The orthopedics or the ophthalmologists are already there. They've got their beepers off. They're there to learn. This is just an absolutely great way to network with doctors. Um, if you want more information about exactly how to launch this kind of campaign, you can go and watch video number eight in the Accelerate Your Growth. All right, the third go-to marketing campaign is to conduct informational interviews. So as you're just entering a medical market, you need to gather intelligence. So this started out as just a way of learning more about doctors. But then advisors came to me and said, you know what, like this really works. About 80% of the time when I ask a doctor to be interviewed, they say yes. And I started thinking, well, gee, why not just do this on a regular basis? So this is nothing more than going to doctors and asking them to help you by seeing the world through their eyes. So let me just walk you through how this happens. And this is a great way of getting one of your first doctors who will be an advocate for you and open that red velvet rope. So 
you always want to go to the top. You know, they say if you want to get something done, you go to a busy person. So what you want to do is you want to find key physician opinion leaders. I learned this from the pharmaceutical industry. Whenever they've got a new drug that they're going to release, this is the first person they look for. So let's say you're in Seattle. You know you want to work with surgeons. The go-to local association is the Seattle Surgical Society. So you just look at the elected officers and you just go down the list and do informational interviews with them. Now, the person who's actually the best person to approach is the past president. They have their finger on the pulse of the association because they were just the president, but they have a little more time to do this. So that's what I would recommend. A second way of looking for doctors to interview is to find the list of top doctors in your area. So if you took the Seattle Magazine and you wanted to work with cardiologists, you would get a list of cardiologists. Now, some of these lists are pay to play. Others are you know, true lists of doctors who have been surveyed and were asked, you know, if you needed to see a cardiologist, who would you see? So those are peer reviewed. But any kind of list would be a great list to just find the doctors to interview. And then here is the proven script. You can say, you might not know this about me, but I'm committed to serving the cardiologists who serve our community. Would you be willing to help me help them? And I put this in red because this is such a powerful phrase. When you ask doctors to help you, they reflexively say yes. Then you say, I would appreciate the chance to interview you and see the world through your eyes. Just to be clear, this is not a sales pitch and I will not be soliciting your business. I genuinely want to gather the information that will help me help my clients. And again, this works about 80% of the time. The part about this not being a sales pitch is also very, very important. And if you do a good job, then probably what's going to happen is that by the end of the interview, they might even be asking you, hey, would you be willing to take a look at my financial situation? But you can end this interview with the question. If you were to launch a campaign to help doctors thrive, how would you get the word out? And then just be quiet and have your pencil ready because chances are good that they are just going to give you a to-do list. Well, why don't I introduce you to blah, 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 and you should really be at this meeting. Hey, have you ever thought about submitting an article to this publication? Basically, once you are um, seen as a great guy, they're going to roll out the red carpet and they are going to help you get to where you want to be. Now, they can do this even if they're not your client. They could be working with somebody else, but they still could recommend you. Another great question that Richard has recommended is what would the worst way to um, engage doctors be? I, um, I just had somebody, an advisor, and I send out weekly marketing tips. And every time I send him out a tip, he sends this autoresponder telling me how busy he is, thanking me for my email and saying he'll try to get back to me at his earliest convenience. And I just thought, you know, I need to just tell this guy that he is shooting himself in the foot. This just does not work with doctors. So they, these, these key physician opinion leaders really will tell you. So the best way to get somebody interested in you, as you well know, is to express a genuine interest in them. So those are your three go-to marketing campaigns. Now let's move on to the next step, which is building sales funnels. So I will confess, when I made the transition from being a practicing surgeon to being in business, I would wake up pretty much every day saying, I hate selling. And I thought, you know, I would just be so much more effective if I had better sales skills. So I needed to figure out a way to engage people in a way that worked for me. And what I decided was that marketing was the activity of engaging others in a conversation. And then selling was inspiring others to take action. 
So if you ever listen to the human heart, it goes lub dub, lub dub, lub dub. So you want every encounter to have a marketing component and a selling component. But here's the deal. You'd love to just be able to meet a doctor, maybe share a nice dinner, maybe have a meeting or two, and then have them say, you're the person for me. I want you to be my advisor. Well, I asked my most successful advisors to go back and take a look at their top 50 doctor clients and calculate how many contacts they had before this doctor converted from a prospect to a client. And I was expecting a bell-shaped curve around, oh, maybe seven to nine, because we know in the pharmaceutical industry that doctors need to be exposed to a marketing message about seven to 10 times before they actually change prescribing patterns. But then there was this interesting surprise. There wasn't just one peak, there were two different peaks. And um, actually, I found my advisor just the same way. So depending on where the lead was generated, you see different results. So if an introduction to you comes from a family friend or a fan, this doctor may have already decided to work with you before they've even met you, just based on the strength of the recommendation. That's when you've got that escape velocity, right? That's where you want to get to. That's how I found my advisor. If you build relationships by dipping into your bucket of power partners or doctor information seekers, it's going to be longer. So this has nothing to do with you or your value. This is just the way that doctors are. So why not plan a smart sales funnel? So what's the difference between a marketing plan and a sales funnel? Well, the marketing plan is what's on your to-do list. It's what you do. I think of the sales funnel as what steps the doctor wants through. So what's their experience with you? And what you would like to do is create this medical marketing labyrinth. So if you've ever walked a labyrinth, you know that you could just walk right to the center. You can physically do that. And what ultimately you'd like to get to with a doctor is to ask that big question, doctor, are we a good fit? But that's not the way it works in the medical market. You've got to walk around these rings multiple times. Like for most prospects, it's going to be like seven to 10 times. So doesn't it make sense to build a marketing campaign or a sales funnel that will accommodate this need to have multiple contacts? All right, next step is to think leverage. So what is leverage? It's getting more done with less. So if you've got an Allen wrench and an Allen screw, you know that you can either put the short end or the long end into the screw. When you put the short end in, you have a longer lever arm that you're pushing and you get the work done with less efforts. So as you're doing, as you're reaching out to doctors, you want to be smart too. So if you have your choice between reaching out to a stranger or reaching out to a neighbor or a friend or a family member, you would prefer to reach out to a fan, somebody who already knows, likes, and trusts you. So as you get together for the holiday season, for example, does everyone in the family know that you have this special focus in working with doctors, if in fact that's the direction that you wanna go? You have much greater leverage if you make efforts to get in front of groups of doctors rather than individuals. It's very difficult to get in front of doctors. And if you wanna make an appointment, you should probably expect that in about one of three times, somebody's gonna come into the emergency room, something's gonna happen and you've gotta reschedule. If you have a choice between building a relationship with somebody with a large sphere of influence, like the president of an association, or somebody with a small sphere of influence, obviously it's better to get the large sphere. You also want to think about your sales funnel, how much you're gonna leverage technology. In general, high tech has much more leverage than high touch, but what we also know is that there is a generational bias. So if you're dealing with millennials, you definitely want high tech. You definitely want a sign up box on your um, website 
you want to deliver digital content because that's the way that millennials want to receive their content. On the other hand, um, boomers would prefer in person. They like high touch. Okay, um, I really do recommend that you have some kind of sign up box so that you can digitally capture names. This is going to make practice building much easier. And believe it or not, there could be doctors on your list for a year or two who might just really want to see if you're the real deal before they sign on. But if you've got a sign up box and you're sending things out digitally, it doesn't really matter how long they're on your list. What's important is that you're giving them the chance to get to know, like, and trust you a little more. And every time they open your email, that's one step closer to converting. All right, three big mistakes. Mistake number one is failure to fit in. So doctors are very tribal. We talked about how doctors behave like tropical fish because of their fear of the stranger. So you want to earn your stripes as one of them. So you want to pay particular attention to the etiquette. So last time we talked about the importance of not calling a doctor by their first name. Use the doctor title until you're invited to use the first name, and it's going to happen really quickly. This is just the etiquette. Mistake number two is moving too fast. You can talk with doctors about financial literacy, but if you ask them to disclose their financial truth to you too soon, it's going to scare them away. It's like asking them to open their financial kimono too early. So move slowly and listen to the cues. Let them tell you when they're ready to disclose what they're worth. That doesn't mean that you can't offer intellectual property. For example, there's a great piece of IP called financial DNA. Doctors can take a quiz and it will tell them something about their innate tendency to deal with money. You can give something like this out all day. But asking doctors to, you know, bring you their portfolio statement or their last tax returns, be really patient with that. And mistake number three is giving up too soon. You know, maybe you've spoken with doctors five or six times about, oh, uh, an investing strategy. They say, yeah, 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 I'm interested. But then it gets frustrating because, gee, I've already spoken with a doctor five times about this. When are they actually going to act? And they, they take this as some kind of message that the doctor is not really interested. And that's not it at all. It's just that the doctor, for whatever reason, isn't ready to take action yet. I mean, for all you know, a patient died the month before, or they just got sued. There's a lot of moving parts in a doctor's life. And as long as they're willing to keep on talking with you, keep on engaging them and and just be there, be top of mind, because they will, they will, in fact, make the move. And wouldn't it be a shame if you, you know, were the were the person talking with them five times and, you know, the sixth time they spoke to one of your competition and you'd already basically groomed a doctor to do business with that other person. So to optimize success in the medical market. You want to, first of all, focus on specific groups of doctors. And remember, we said that doctors are like-minded. They share a similar source of pain. They gather together and you have an affinity to them. Plan these drip marketing campaigns. Find out what doctors really, really want and then give it to them. A very effective way of dripping is just make a list of the questions that doctors actually ask you, not the questions you think they should be asking, but the questions that they ask you, and then make a little video about each of them. You obviously don't want to give them financial advice. That, that wouldn't be ethical. You know, it wouldn't be in anyone's best interest. But if you've got a doctor who's wondering, hey, how much should I have saved for retirement? You can say, well, here are some of the considerations that factor into the kinds of conversations that I have with my clients. Um, collect email addresses so you do have an easy way of reaching out to these doctors and ask doctors, how would you like me to get in touch with you? And then I highly recommend sending something that doctors value every month. 
And then I really want you to think about the power of doctors to influence other doctors. And I'd love to see you be able to harness that power by having a doctor on your team. So when you're talking to the key physician opinion leaders, maybe you want to invite them to be on your advisory board. If you're giving a talk, maybe you want to have a doctor introduce you. Or maybe you want to invite a doctor in to make a presentation with you or partner with a physician as you approach associations. This past year, I, um, I was out a lot on the road speaking to groups of doctors. I partnered with somebody who's done about 400 doctor seminar events. And he said, that's it. I'm, I'm never going to go out and give another seminar without having you with me because he saw the way that a doctor sort of opens that red velvet rope and builds trust. My passion is helping doctors. Something that keeps doctors from thriving is not having their finances in order. So it's a pleasure and an honor to be able to help you. Please reach out if you have any questions about what you heard or any questions about your efforts to deal with doctors. Thank you so much for your investment and I'll look forward to catching you next time.